Let us look to the word. I want to take you through a few scripture. Uh, we're going to look at Acts chapter 1 and uh, look at verse 8. But my text this morning is going to come out of Romans chapter 6. But let's start with Acts chapter 1. And I want to talk to you about <clears throat> being a spirit people. Now when I say that, I don't want you to think like the Indians and think, you know, spirit man and that kind of thing. But there's something from that culture we can kind of relate to in this is that they understand what the spirit means more than most modern Americans maybe. They understand that there is a spirit within us that leads us and there's a power above them that will direct. Now they may be going to the wrong God for their direction, but they get that spirit ideology. Now for us as modern day Christians, what do we get when it comes to being a Christian? How do we answer the sin question? How do we answer this question? Can Christians live in sin and go to heaven? You know, and that comes up because of what's currently happening. And as Jack said, I don't know where you're at on that, but this is a memo from our general superintendent. And I read to you today. <clears throat> Societies across the globe are engaged in conversations to redefine marriage. Media debates, election day balloting, and government court rulings have provided the platform for this redefinition. We believe a biblical view of marriage involves a monogamous, uh, covenantal relationship between a man and a woman. Jesus said, at the beginning, the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Today, which was when it happened, the United States Supreme Court in a five to four decision of uh, Obfell, I can't even say his name right, versus Hodges, legalized same-sex marriage nationwide. We remind our people that while the civil law of yet another country has changed, divine truth has not changed. We will learn how the civil definition functions within the context of our constitutional and religious freedoms. Our commitment to the orthodox biblical Christian faith remains the same. We continue to call Nazarenes around the world to a life of holiness characterized by holy love and expressed through the most right, rigorous and consistent lifestyle of sexual purity. We further call our people to a generosity of graciousness of spirit that extends kindness to those who do not share our belief. Underline that sentence. We pray that God will help us be examples of his truth in a world that needs to see God's love demonstrated in word and deed more than ever. Jerry D. Porter and all the general superintendents signed that. So that's our statement and that's where we're at. In case you were curious. You would say, Pastor, how come you're not Facebooking and debating? Because I don't find that as a platform uh, for spreading the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Amen? We need to focus on that. And this morning, God redirected, not this morning, just yesterday, God redirected my message, uh, what I was going to do. And so you'll get that message later. But this is what he wants us to hear this morning. And this is living in the Spirit. We need to be a people who live by the Holy Spirit, not by legalism, okay? Amen? And I think that, that that's something we can't yet grasp sometimes. Many of us do, but some don't. And that is a problem when it comes to this question. How do we really live in a world full of temptation and in a body of carnality? Well, we see that this is all about Passing a baton. When we look into the Old Testament, we see that there's covenant made, there's the commandments given, and the people walk that line. Jesus comes to planet Earth. God sends his son to bring a new covenant. It's called a covenant of grace. Now, grace, as you know, can be misused, misdirected. It can be squandered. It can be bought. People try to sell it. People try to use it, manipulate it, and so on and so forth. But it can't be. It's unmerited favor that comes from God, and it must be utilized through the Holy Spirit. And so God makes that covenant with man by making it new and fresh, by sending us his son Jesus Christ and he comes and he gives his life on Calvary's tree to put sin to death to kill it 
sin to death. I, I want that to be in your head for just a moment. Sin dies. The covenant is given in Jesus by his blood, by his stripes, as is for, for, for said, we are healed. And so now we are free from sin. Praise God. Amen. Does that mean that we continue to keep on sinning? It would be like being married to your wife and say, we are married. I love you, baby. And I love your girlfriend, too. Excuse me? You know? Well, I have this temptation that leads me over to her house and it's, it's not the way we should live, amen? Today I want you to understand that I'm not talking about any sin any differently than anything else, amen? When we talk about homosexuality, we talk about sexual promiscuity, when we talk about lust, when we talk about being a thief, when we talk about cursing, when we talk about misusing the temple of the Holy Spirit, this is sin. Amen? And what has happened in the world is that we have become people who understand the commandments and we learn how to walk around them real carefully and then think we can just step on into heaven. And so God's made a covenant for us by giving us Jesus Christ. And he said to his disciples, I must go. What? We want you to be with us. We don't want you to leave. We want you to be with us forever. And he said, but I must go. And we know one of the disciples didn't like that. And he said this to him. He said, get behind me, Satan. Because Christ must go so that we could have another. <laughs> he would send a counselor. He would send the Holy Spirit. And so in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says this. i got to get to it. I know it, but I want to read it this right. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth. We would be recipients of the Counselor, the Holy Spirit. He would come upon us. Nicodemus goes to Jesus in John chapter 3 at night, and when he talks to him, Jesus talks about this. He said, you must be born again. Now, he's in the... the uh, the presence of God, he's with Jesus, and Jesus is saying, you must be born again, which means that this covenant is going to happen, and for you to go to be with the Father in heaven, for you to live a life of victory, you're going to have to be born again. And he didn't quite get it, and he said, this is how it's going to happen. It's going to be happening by the water and the Spirit. And we see this water comes out of the side of Christ before he dies. They poke a sword in the side, and it comes out. What's so significant about the water? The water is this. The blood covers and the water transforms. The water gives us life. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Right? I don't know about you, but <laughs> it's been a long day. And I'm hot and I'm thirsty. And uh, water is going to quench my thirst. Not sawdust. Not a box of salt. <laughs> Thirsty. Thirsty? How about some, some salt? It's in a round container. Just open up, buddy. Chug it on down. No. We need that spiritual water. We need the Holy Spirit. So Christ makes this covenant and he passes the baton to us. We receive that and we are empowered with the Holy Spirit. And now we live this life with Christ, with the Holy Spirit inside of us. When do you get the Holy Spirit? Well, when you confess your sins and ask Christ to come into your heart, you receive the Holy Spirit and power. 
Woo! Amen? Thing is, is that how do we use that? When I go back to the, the, the Ten Commandments, I think about living a life by the law only versus living a life by the Spirit. And this is what comes up to my mind. Let me ask you a question. And while I ask you that question, turn to Romans with me. Romans, and we're going to go to chapter 6. If you just do good, think about it. I tell you the Ten Commandments, I say, here they are, do them. And you do good. You do bad, you do good. You're doing your best. Do you go to heaven? Now, some of you are going to say, well, yeah, I mean, I'm doing the Ten Commandments, you know. <laughs> A book that tells you how to do good things is not going to save your life. But a Savior who would come into your heart and transform you can. The Bible does not say, if you do these 25 things plus addendum to that, then you'll go to heaven. The Bible says, if you believe in Jesus Christ and confess Him as Lord and Savior, you will be saved. Christ comes in your life. Amen? You become a vessel of Christ. By the Holy Spirit. He is in you. Do y'all get that? Maybe you're like trying to figure that out, you know? Doing good will not get you to heaven. Now, being good is a good thing. The Bible tells us to be good. How come are we good? How come you're good? Because God directs you to do so. Amen? He is in you everywhere you go. If you check in with Him, when you go. You see, we have these abilities to shut out things, don't we? If you've been in a relationship for a while or maybe you've been uh, <clears throat> working with a coworker for a long time, there may come a point that you will disagree. Would y'all agree with me on that? You know? And uh, what could happen at that particular point when they talk and you don't agree with it, you may do something like this. It's called selective hearing. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Hello? Yeah. So what happens now, it's kind of like, it irritates you when you see a teenager do it. They put on those little earbuds. I love you. Are you listening to me? You know? They're not listening to you, man. You know? I'm amazed how loud those things can get. You know what I'm saying? But us older people, we might not put those on, but it'd be like this. Hey, what's going on? Blah, 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 blah. What? I can't hear you. <laughs> Take out the trash. I'm, I can't hear you. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I'm busy. The Holy Spirit speaks to us when we have the ability to listen to Him or not. Amen? And in fact, it can get to a point that God can be speaking to us very clearly and we have become so interested in everything else that pleases us that we can't even recognize it. When I say this this morning, this is what happens when we read Romans chapter 6. So Romans chapter 6, read this, it preaches for itself, but let's read the text. Are you there? Say amen. Amen. What shall we say then? Because <laughs> this is the question. Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Well, what the heck? Let's do this. God's got it. What's the answer? By no means. We died to sin. Hello? We died to sin because Christ kills it, right? So how can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too may live. What kind of life, people? A new life. If we, 
there we go, we have a clause here. If we have been united with him like this in his death, which means that we're going to do just like he did, we're going to put it to death, the sin in our life. <clears throat> we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self, old self was what, church? Crucified with him so that the body of sin might be what? Done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now think about it for a minute. You make this covenant with Christ. It's almost like this. I think about diet for a second. So hold on to that idea. So you make this commitment with Christ, and Christ comes in your life. It's a new life, and you live a life of victory, okay? How do you live a life of victory? It's going to take work. It's going to take effort. It's going to take you communicating with God by listening to Him, living with Him, walking with Him. How many of y'all know what it's like to do a diet? Diet, you know what I'm saying? New Year's resolution, maybe right now. You're wanting to lose a little bit of weight. You're thinking, I got to lose. My wife and me, we go, we go back and forth with this one, okay? We got a diet. Yes, we got a diet. Tomorrow we'll start. And you wake up. Let's go, baby. I'm ready. I'm not eating none of that stuff. I'm going to do this, baby. We're going to make it. And we do good that day. Or she does. <laughs> and the next, and the next, and then comes Wednesday. And you know what happens to diets? And I want to help you with this. This also happens with our spiritual life. What happens with a diet? Tell me. Okay, you, you've got kids playing ball, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. When you go home, you can do what with your diet? You can control it. Are you with me? You've got kids play ball three games a week. You've got to go here. You've got two jobs. You've got to go over there. So where do you stop along the way? Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, 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 go. There's the big M, uh-huh, and the BK, and the Sonic, hey, hey, and there we go. There's not too many healthy restaurants around, are there? If they are, they're slow. I want my food now. I gotta hurry up and get there, you know? How many fast places got carrots and celery with peanut butter on them you can eat real quick, right? And so there you go, so you pull in, and money's tight. We were talking about this the other day. You know, you can get a dollar hamburger or two and, and live. You can make it, you know what I'm saying? You got the dollar menu, hello, are you with me? You can make it on McDonald's food for a while. And so we eat that. It, maybe we save some money. We got this figured out. We just, it just ain't working, you know? Man, we started off good. What happened to us? We got busy. Busy's four letters I learned from a friend is being under Satan's yoke. When we think about this in our life, we get so busy, our spiritual life goes to pot. And we begin to focus on what instead of him. My body looks big today. We start focusing on our belly. We start focusing on our pleasures. Think about this. Things are going bad in your life. An ice cream will help out, won't it? Hey, you work hard all day. You're tired. Think about this. <laughs> Exercise or couch? Well, who's going to win on this one? Does the couch fight back? Does the couch say, don't sit on me? Get up and walk, buddy. What does it say? Nothing. And we like no talk back, right? When we get on that couch and, ah. And what do we do? We watch TV. Hello? So what is beginning? Man, I sound like a preacher today. What begins to <laughs> direct our life? The couch don't talk. But it sure feels good, and TV does, and it teaches us, and we're comfortable. Are we really? Physically, what happens when we go on with that process? We get bigger, lazier, grumpier, meaner. They took a guy, and they put him on McDonald's food for a month. He ate, because McDonald's has breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They have all three. You can get an Egg McMuffin, you know. And the guy went, he's a healthy guy. 
And he went from healthy and happy to fat and grumpy in one month. Changed his whole life. His wife and kids were saying he was mean and hateful and arguing, you know. It's like going to Disney World on vacation. It's that beautiful morning and all the kids are ready to go. M-I-C-E-K-E-Y, M-O-U-S-E, and all ready to go and they're dancing. Daddy, you're the best. I love you, Daddy. We're going to ride and see Cinderella. And you watch these families. They come in the gate and they're so happy. And I mean, they're the happiest. They're even listening to their parents for a moment, you know. They're like saying, yes, Daddy, you're the best, you know. And then about 3 o'clock, you know, they don't look the same, you know. They had that pretty little bow in their hair, and now it's kind of like down here, and they're sweating, and they're dry. Daddy, I hate you. Or they don't say it to Daddy, they say it to their brother, I'm going to kill you. And, and, and you look, and they got the biggest slurpy soda pop thing, and they're sucking on it, and they're just trying to get some pleasure. I just got to get something out of this goodness. And they feel temporary happiness, but it just does something to them. It dehydrates them. Okay, this is the scientific problem. Caffeine, sugar dehydrates you. It's got water in it. <laughs> it's got to be pure water, right? <laughs> Hello. There's some kind of symbolism in this message today. And so... They get grumpy, and they won't eat, and the parents give them everything they want. We're on vacation, honey. Let them have what they want, you know, right? I don't know if y'all ever watched the movie with uh, Eddie Murphy. It's called uh, uh, Daddy Daycare. You ever see that one? All right, I, I have to use some, some parables for you, uh, for you people here. And, uh, and so Eddie Murphy, they try to have a daycare for kids, and what do we feed them? Just give them what they want, and they give them cookies, and, and they just... They go nuts. They tear the house up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hello? You know? And so they get what they want. And you see where I'm going with this. It just, it, it kills the vacation. And by the time you look on Facebook, by day four, whatever, about to come home, we just can't wait to get home. And they look, they don't look like the same picture. You can almost see the pictures. It kind of looks like someone on crystal meth, you know? They start off like this and they like, oh. go Mickey Mouse, you know? Yeah. That's life without the Spirit. We do it our way, but we don't find freedom. The Bible goes on to say in verse 8, Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with Him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, He cannot die again, church. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So in the same way, count yourselves, what? Dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, who isn't just words, who isn't just kind of a theology, but he's the living water. Hello? He's it. And when we drink from him, we have life. But when we don't, we have death. Does that make sense? And you come to me and you say, Pastor Art, I don't know where all the victory has gone in my life. Well, let's just do a little checkup. Now, I'm not going to go through the Ten Commandments with you, but we'll find out that somewhere along the line, you started running after your own pleasures and your own satisfaction, and you've left God behind. And we love to use this scripture where it says, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know what? He's always there and he always will be. The problem is we're the ones walking away. The prodigal son, he comes back. God will open his arms for you. But it seems in this journey in our life, we drift away. So count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to Christ. Don't let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to Him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master because you're not under the law. Wow! But under what? Grace. Whoo! Amazing grace. How sweet the sound sets the captive free 
I once was lost, but now I'm found. Oh, man. Mm. He is that water. Can we go to heaven with sin in our life? <laughs> There's just not sin in heaven. Christ has made a way. You know, I look to uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and I want to close with this one. And it, it comes up all the time in conversation. Because we look at the Old Testament and they always sacrifice something for the sins of the people. And this comes up. What's better, obedience or sacrifice? Sacrifice. Sacrifice is what we do on the first day of a diet. We say, I'm going to diet. Are you with me? I'm going to do it. But obedience is doing the diet. Amen? To obey is great. Not that sacrifices, you've got to start with that covenant of grace. But obedience is to carry the baton. Now what happens is many people, they, they look at life as a carnalness that they can't overcome. And somewhere in theology, in some churches, they say that we live in a carnal body and we're always going to lose. That's like going to a race and say, you're going to win in Christ, but when you get to the start block, I'll look over at you and say, but you're going to lose this race, buddy. <laughs> what? How many of y'all know that in the end of this book, it says, God loses? Uh, hello? Y'all should be upset I said that. In the end of this book, it says, God wins. Are you excited about that today? I hope so. You're going to win. You're a winner in Christ. Amen? <laughs> Woo! So don't make sin an object of your desire. Let the Spirit be. Let Christ be your focus. Amen? It goes like this in 10 verse 26. It tells us to persevere. If you want to know about the sacrifice one, uh, it's right there in verse 5. Sacrifice and offerings you do not desire. So you want to read this chapter when you get a chance. When we get to verse 26, it says this. If we deliberately keep on sinning. Now I want you to hold on to that for a second. Deliberately, if we deliberately keep on. Because some of you are going to say, well, you can give me no room for, for messing up, Pastor Art. God forgives. Amen. It's the person who says, it's not a sin. I'm going to do this, and that's just the way it's going to be. Have you ever met that person before? You might be in your family. <laughs> They're going to say, you know what? I don't care what you say. I'm going to do it anyway. If you deliberately keep on. That's what he's saying. This is what's going to happen. If you deliberately keep on sinning after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there's no sacrifice for sins left. Well, what is there? Only fearful expectation of judgment and a raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. You need to decide, I'm born again with Christ. I stand on a solid rock. I'm going to walk in the light. But if you deliberately say, heck no, buddy. I'm going to do as I please and God's going to bless it. Oh, that's not true. No more true than... A spouse is going to bless you having an affair, right? They can't because if they bless that affair, then it makes their relationship with you unrighteous. And I want you to this morning, our relationship with God is righteous and you can't change his righteousness. Amen? Do y'all grasp that? He is a holy God. And he wants to make us holy. And so... We must walk in the light and not sin. Because it's not going to be our master no more. John 16, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me. This is Jesus 
says the Spirit will glorify him because it is from him that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Christ in you. God will lead us. Amen? <laughs> wow. You know, it's huge as I close today. It's huge when you think about it how huge prayer is. It's huge. I would rather, and I'm not saying any of these is better than the other. I'm not saying a churchless life and giving it any kind of glory. We must be in the house of God. It tells us in the word. Let's not forsake the assembling of one another. But I'd rather be in the presence of a praying person than in a religious individual. Did you get that? I'd rather be in the presence of someone who's connecting with God than someone who just goes through the motions. Because the law will not save you. We need the law. You don't throw it out the door. You know why you're going to follow the Ten Commandments? Because Christ is going to help you do it. Amen? When you get ready to do wrong, He's going to say, ah, you know? You're not going to go places you're not supposed to go because God's going to say, whoa. You're going to feel it inside of you. And a lot of people say, that's weird, man. I don't get that. <laughs> you ever felt funny when you're where you're not supposed to be? You wonder, why is that? You think that's indigestion? <laughs> God is trying to quicken you. Say, I'm with you. Get out of there. Don't go down that street. How many of y'all like to go down dark alleys at midnight in St. Louis? Oh, that's just fun, Pastor. <laughs> it's okay. Come on, everybody. It's, all, it's safe. I've been down it before. When did you go down it? Oh, 12 o'clock today. <laughs> it's not going to be the safe tonight. And your friends all say, we're out of here. <laughs> in fact, come with us. Don't go down that road, you know. We feel that because he's there, you know. And we know better. I'm finding more and more people are looking for ways out of being the people God wants them to be. They're getting on the internet, finding people who interpret passages of Scripture to define that they can sin. Oh, well, this pastor says it this way, but these guys over here says that. How many of y'all believe today and know for a fact, without a shadow of a doubt, that if you look hard enough, you can find somebody who agree with you? Hello? And how many of y'all know, without a shadow of a doubt, that not... <laughs> that when you talk out of this Bible, not everybody's going to agree with you? And how many of y'all know that you're going to get persecuted for it? You know? People are not going to like you. And so that's hard to accept because we like to be liked. It's nice for a pat on the back and, hey, man, you're cool and... Man, you know, that Bible you read is pretty harsh, you know. <laughs> I can tell you one thing. I thank God for my dad for spanking my little rear end, keep me out of the road when cars went by. Instead of saying, boy, just walk in the street, they'll stop. <laughs> Are you with me on this? You get what I'm saying? <laughs> he said, get over here right now. Oh, daddy, well, you know, I'm not encouraging spanking, but it worked for me. And uh, <laughs> don't get in the road because I had ADD. So that kind of put me in focus, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I heard him and he, he stopped and he said, look, you see that truck right there? He hit you. You go splat. No more. Okay. It's not a video game. There's no reset button, okay? There's not game over, start again, you know? It's over. And so I became the little policeman for the street. Kids in the street. Truck coming! Get out, everybody! Ah! You know? <laughs> I was like the watchman, you know? Outside the city gate, you know? And I learned. You see those people at Walmart? You know, you're walking, you're driving along, and they just walk right across. You're just like... They didn't even look. My wife says it. They didn't even look. You know? I know what some of y'all do. Y'all red remote. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm right here. 
It's the Holy Spirit talking to you today. Amen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's stand. It's my prayer that we get this, that we live by the Spirit, that God will direct us. And His Word is truth. And prayer is powerful. If we will seek Him and take up His cross every day, we'll live a life of victory. We will overcome the temptations of the world. And we will see very clearly the direction He ought to take us. And it will be a safe harbor, safe passage. It will be a good life, a life of victory with Him. Heavenly Father, I thank You for the message of the cross. I thank You for Your Son, Jesus, who gave His life for us. God, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit that is in us would be brought up to the surface and engage us powerfully to direct us. May our ears be listeners. May our eyes be seers. May we hear and do as you direct. And may we be witnesses to this world. And may we extend the arms of love and embrace a lost and dying nation. And so, Father God, let it be so. God bless America. God bless this great country. Let us be vessels of that love and let us be people who live by the word of God. We love you today. Forgive us, direct us, we pray. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen.